very much for the organization group for the invitation. So, in this presentation, I'm going to present the main strategies that the Vector Control Program of the Ministry of Health of Mexico has implemented in response to the evidence of insecticide resistance in the country. Um, I would like to say that many of this talk is, to, is, is thanks to the effort and collaboration of these people who support and give advice to Mexican authorities. Dr. Gonzalo Vasquez from Emory University and Dr. Audrey Lehar from CDC Atlanta who are supporting many students in Mexico. The Dr. Pablo Manrique and Dr. Adriana Flores uh, they are part of the advisory group for vector control in Mexico, and this guy that, and um, this guy is my chief, is my is Fabian Correa Morales, the vice director of vector control program in Mexico, and Felipe Zulja is, is part of this group of researchers, uh, which I belong. So during the national eradication campaign of malaria, more that. 82 million houses were sprayed with DDT throughout Mexico from uh, 50s to 80s. This action also had an impact on Aedes control. In 1960, no dengue cases were reported in the country, and three years later, uh, the Pan American Health Organization certified Aedes aegypti eradication in Mexico. And the end um, of 80s, um, the use of DDT decreased, and in the final of 90s, DDT was prohibited as part of the agreements established by the North American Free Trade Agreement and fully, and fully discontinued in 2000. And Delta Metrin was sporadically used between 1999 to 2000, but after that, dengue control programs switched to permetrin based formulation for indoor and outdoor spraying, uh, and permitting was exclusively used for almost 10 years for adult control. The extensive use of DDT between 50 and 80s, and the long and intensive use of pyrethroids in public health during the 90s, promoted an intensive selection pressure for the evolution of resistance in Aedes aegypti, and resulted in a dramatic increase on the frequency of 10, 16 KDR mutation. Later studies demonstrate that a second mutation, uh, 15, 30, 34 KDR mutation, was more common than 10, 16 mutation. And results show that more than 50% of mosquitoes genotyped express both mutations. So, when this evidence was published, the National Vector, the National Vector Program uh, decided not recommend the use of permetrin. Instead, new insecticides never used before were proposed, a uh, pyrethroid, such as sumitrin or phenotrin, and a organophosphate, chlorpyrifos. In 2010, the permetrin was prohibited, as I mentioned, and in the same year, the National, Co the National Program created an advisory group for insecticide resistance, which, which was integrated by researchers, experts in this topic from different universities and institutes from Mexico. As results, on June 2011, a new policy was published that established that, that the characteristic of the insecticides to be used for vector control in Mexico. Since then, the list of insecticides has been updated each year. However, however, the national program knew about the needs to monitor the susceptibility of insecticides, and during three years was working to create the national units of bioassays to monitoring the susceptibility. So this is a timeline of insecticide use in Mexico. Uh, there is larvicides, mainly temephos, but more recently uh, is approved the use of BTI and spinosad and insect growth regulators and metoprene. And for ULB space spraying, uh, it's approved uh, 
per parithroids and organophosates like chlorpyrifos and malation and recently pyrimifos methyl. And for indoor spraying, uh, basically parithroids and, and carbamates, including propoxur and benzocarb, two carbamates. The diversity of insecticides available now is not only in terms of chemical groups, uh, also more, um, and more re recently in terms of their way to be applied. Uh, for example, uh, bifentrin and deltametrin was initial approved for indoor spraying, but now it's available for dual base space spraying. Uh, the selection of the insecticides um, the new, the, these new products represent a list of options for Mexican states, not available before 2010. The selection of insecticides, insecticide-based formulation must be based on the status of vector susceptibility to the insecticide, but also in the status of vector control interventions and consider the epidemiological context. For the first one, the national units by USA have an important role. So I would like to briefly mention that the Ministry of Health has developed uh, online day-to-day -day surveillance platforms, epidemiological surveillance and entomological surveillance. All the cases since 2008 are located in a GIS system based on their home address. Along the clinical data associated to these cases, there is entomological information collected from uh, obi tramping network. The GIS platform used the information of both plat of sorry of both platforms. Um, each week, uh, the information the both platform uh, identify the presence of cases in 500 meters radius in obi -Trump, in obi -Trump positive. Uh, two X of Aedes, and signals, like you see in the picture, uh, the areas from low to high risk according to the number of eggs collected and the presence of cases. The, lo the local vector program in each state states use this information to make a decision. So the country level monitoring network of Obitraps established gave the base to implement the monitoring of susceptibility to insecticides. The obitraps are set in a systematic way, trying to put uh, one tram in each side of the block, every three blocks in the urban, in the main urban areas of Mexico, and represent um, permanent points of observation, um, homogeneous sampling in all the localities. Actually, we have m more than 200,000 obitraps in the main cities of Mexico, including the, the Mexico City. By the way, uh, we have the, the first report of Aedes aegypti in Mexico City collected using this uh, Obi-Trumpet network. Uh, the paper is coming, I think, but it's no established population in Mexico City. That will be terrible. Uh, this country level monitoring network of obi tramps is used to collect eggs and emerge adults of Aedes mosquitoes to perform susceptibility tests using CDC bottles. These bioessays uh, are performed by the national units of bioessays. The first evaluation was carried out in 2014 for the main insecticide active ingredients used in the formulation approved for vector control. And currently, these evaluations are extended to larvicide formulation in semi-field and field evaluation. The results obtained should be, are used to select the insecticide-based formulation in each state in Mexico. So this is the results of first evaluation. Show, in, general, in general, show uh, a lack of susceptibility to parvitros type 1. Uh, mainly permetrin, you can see the, the red color is the red, uh, lack of susceptibility. From moderate, uh, blue color, um, complete susceptible, the green color, uh, to some parvitros type 2, mainly alpha cypermetrin, bifentrin, and deltametrin, and almost complete susceptibility to organophosphate and carbamates.
So based on this information, the list of insecticides uh, approved by the National Ministry of Health is published every year. And together with the results of national monitoring of insecticide susceptibility, is published in the online web page of Senaprese, uh, the National Center for Control and Disease Prevention. Uh, disease control and prevention. So some issues such as sample size, season of collection, frequency of monitoring, and intensity of resistant bottled bioassays uh, is going to be considered for the next evaluation. Currently, we are working in more specific protocol for the states, for Mexican states. In the same time, we are working in a proposal to establish at least three regional centers of excellence for more specific studies to determine the insecticide resistant profiles. Other aspect that we are strengthening is the, is the operational research in collaboration with um, national and international universities and agencies, basically focus in evaluate, improve, and innovate the actual strategies of vector control, such as indoor residual spraying and insecticide treated house screening. So, based on previous experience, we are currently interested in develop best and enhanced IRS that will provide similar protective efficacy of traditional IRS but with a reduction in the, in the application time. We are going to evaluate uh, different equipments, including uh, motorized equipments and application techniques, such as target Aedes aegypti resting location, for example, spraying in furniture, uh, under tables, closet, um, lower walls, etc. So we are carrying out, we are carrying, carrying out field studies to test initially the impact of simulated emergency application of IRS on natural population that are spatially hetero, heterogeneous with regard to pyrethroid uh, resistance. The study involves the treatment of entire city blocks. Uh, the entire uh, city blocks has an a strategy simulating the emer emergency response to dengue and chikungunya cases. We follow a cluster randomized design by randomly selecting three uh, city blocks distance over 200 meters from each other that will be sprayed with either one parietroid, delta methin in green color, and one carbamate. Bendiocarp in red color and the controls, no spray. So the preliminary results, um, the, the study, uh, I have to mention that is in an early stage, show differential impacts on the intervention based on chemical group applied. Um, I need to say that the results come from the evaluation made during, during the dry season, so we are going to repeat the same trails during the peak of dengue trans, the dengue transmission. So you can see the, this is the number of adults, this is the baseline study, this is the number two represent the two weeks uh, post intervention survey. This is uh, two mon uh, one month post intervention, uh, two months and three months. So in green you, you can see the delta metrin uh, IRS with delta methane in red color uh, bendiocarp. So despite l the low mosquito densities, the impact of resistance is evident for parietroids. More specific studies, studies we are going to, to perform to evaluate the intervention and insecticide resistant status and change in the gene, gene frequency related to chemical group use. So I would like to show you also part of the work that we are doing with ITS. So, okay, one minute. So, um, our previous studies performed in Mexico, uh, long lasting insecticida nets uh, has a screen on doors and windows of houses, show an immediate and significant effect on indoor adults, uh, eye infestation, uh, which extended for two years. 
despite the IDES Egypto population being resistant to parabetrus. IDES proof housing was replicated in a new area, the Merida city, has a horizontal scaling up experience expanding the coverage of the intervention geographically and then generating more evidence. So what we can see here, this is the, the black line is the intervention uh, cluster and the and the, this is the line of the control. So we can see a significant reduction of the presence of the abundance of indoor Aedes aegypti in the intervention cluster compared to the controls extended until yes. two years. So we collect samples of, the, of, the, of these nets in the operational, uh, in, in the field in operational condition. So we test samples of nets of of a six months intervals, we have nets with six months age, 12, 18, and, and two years. So we can see the, we expose we, the nets to the different susceptible strains, uh, different strains, uh, the field one, the susceptible strain, you can see the impact uh, of the, the reduced efficacy of, of the nets in the resistant strain. So I think that I don't have more time, but Basically, that's us all. Thank you very much.